I think one of the beauties of the rails is you get updates on a weekly basis so that the volume shortfalls that we're talking about are not necessarily a surprise per se. Uh, we've talked about the weather in the Midwest and the flooding, the fact that agricultural has been late starting. Again, not news because we've been hearing about it for so long. The key comes down to how well are you controlling your costs? And I think that's really the story, not just for the rails, but for the market overall. Companies continue to do a great job managing what they can control, which is uh, costs in terms of what they can work their way through. Um, I think the rails wind up being really interesting leverage to the idea of a trade deal. When we've talked so much about kicking the can uh, in terms of, of working to negotiate further, one of the provisos has always been more, more agricultural purchases. So I do think the rails wind up being the nice leverage to that bulk commodity trade that can come at some point. Mark, are they more exposed to global trade or, or to U.S. growth? I, I, think it's, I think it's a little bit of both is, is, is the reality. And frankly, the sentiment, I think, is, is going to drive these. Um, in, in my opinion, there's a belief right now that uh, Trump is going to resolve the, the Chinese issue certainly long before the election. He's not going to let this hang out. And if he does, I mean, I, I think that's, you know, frankly, uh, still OK news for the rails in, in that the underlying economy is strong. If that happens, we get a boost. I mean, you know, that, that's probably more upside than anything else. And the way they're reacting today, that certainly bodes well. I mean, certainly you can look through and... You know, if we go back, the original technical indicator was the, the, the Dow indicator or the transports and look for a, a difference between how the transports behaving and the market broadly. Uh, and even within the transports, you know, the more traditionally internationally exposed names have been much weaker than the rails, which I still think are much more domestically oriented. I, I think the one thing to interject, though, is, is that, make no mistake, the, the volatility with the Chinese trade issue is going to remain out there for another good six months. I mean, you know, we have, we have a house view uh, that, 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 in essence, you know, there is still going to be a lot of challenge to that. There are some major issues to resolve. Huawei hangs out there. I mean, there's a lot to resolve in that. So, you know, while, while we have upside on the stock today, the, the reality is this mm -hmm. could be under pressure, I think, going forward if, uh, if there's concerns that get raised back up. Jack, we've seen some of the big tech stocks pull back a bit today uh, yep. off the back of Netflix. Buying opportunity for Netflix or just for the broader fang names that have suffered a little bit in, in lieu of Netflix numbers? You know, I think the issue when you think about fang is that they're described as secular growth. And if you want to be secular growth, you have to grow regardless of the environment. And I think some of those results, some of the ad results, some of the subscriber models have proven that they have been a bit less secular and perhaps a bit more cyclical. And in that world, you get re, you're re underwritten. So I do like tech broadly, um, but I'd like to have a little bit more cyclical exposure, a little bit more value bias to some of the technology names I'm interested in.